Oh, there's nothing quite as spectacular as viewing the fine white cliffs of Dover. To be honest, that's the south coast of England, so I guess an Irish accent wasn't really appropriate there. It is quite spectacular when you do take a look at these cliffs, even if you're just looking at them in an image. The white coloration comes from deposits of limestone or calcium carbonate. And you might be wondering why this calcium carbonate hasn't sloughed off or receded into the ocean. Well, it has to do with, you guessed it, equilibrium. And there's an equilibrium that exists between the calcium carbonate in the water and the calcium carbonate that's in the limestone cliffs. This all, of course, has to do with how well calcium carbonate dissolves, or how soluble it is, in water. So we have to like, take a look at another product constant here, and we're going to take a look at a solubility product constant. So we're going to be taking a look at the extent to which a solid dissolves. Just as the other equilibrium constants gave us information as to to what extent towards the reactants and products we're, we're looking, this is going to give us an extent to which something dissolves. And an important note here is we're only going to be taking a look at the KSP, as we call it, for the solubility product constant for sparingly soluble or salts that have a low solubility. So the scenario that we're looking at first is that in which calcium carbonate dissolves in water. Now it doesn't dissolve readily, but just about everything dissolves to some extent in water. And so if we take a look at a scenario where we put some calcium carbonate in water, a very, very small amount, that is not enough to reach the point of saturation, we can see that we're going to have calcium ions and carbonate ions within this particular solution. And we can keep adding this calcium carbonate until such point that it becomes saturated. Now, how do we know what is the concentration of these ions when the solution is saturated? Well, we're going to get into that. But if we imagine that we continue to add calcium carbonate, eventually, once we get past saturation, what we're going to start to notice is that the calcium carbonate deposits or forms a precipitate of calcium carbonate on the bottom, and that is the excess solid. So at this point, the calcium carbonate is no longer going to be able to be dissolved. It's no longer going to be soluble in the water. At least it's not going to appear that way. What's actually happening is once we start to see a precipitate form, there is an equilibrium that's established between the solid and the ions that are saturated in this solution. And this is where our equilibrium constant comes in because now we have a scenario where we have something in equilibrium. So it's important to note that when we deal with the solubility product constant or KSP, there has to be a solid present. And we derive this product constant the same way that we derive other constants, like the equilibrium constant, by taking the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants. However, in all cases here for our solubility product constant, we're going to be looking at reactants that are solids. So effectively their concentrations are fixed, or we can say they're factored into the equilibrium constant, so we don't include them in our expression. Really, we're just including the concentrations of the ions that are formed when this particular solid dissociates. So in this case, our KSP is going to be equal to the concentration of the ions involved, that is the calcium ions, and the carbonate ions. And it's worth noting that for this particular scenario where calcium carbonate dissociates in water, it has a really low KSP. That is 3.36 times 10 to the negative 9. And if you've ever taken a look at calcium carbonate or putting chalk or lime into water, you will know that it does not readily dissolve. So this helps us explain why those white cliffs of Dover have remained white and cliffs for as long as they have, because they don't readily dissolve in water. Well, up until this point, we've talked about situations where we're just dissolving a solute or a substance into pure water. But what happens in those scenarios if there's already an ion present in that particular solution? That is, there's a common ion present between the solute that we're adding and the substance that's already dissolved or dissociated in the water. Well, let's take a look at a scenario like that. Let's say we were going to add table salt, sodium chloride, to two samples of water. One of the water uh, samples is pure water. The other sample is seawater. Which one do you think we could add more salt to before a precipitate would form? Well, if you said the water, the pure water, you're absolutely correct, because the seawater already contains sodium ions, already contains chloride ions. So it's closer to its point of saturation. 
And so what we refer to in terms of comparing these two solutions are the relative molar solubilities of these solutions. And when we talk about molar solubility, what we're talking about is the amount of solute that it can be dissolved in order to reach saturation. So in terms of the molar sol solubility of these two substances, the molar solubility of the seawater is less than the molar solubility of the pure water because the pure water does not contain any ions, whereas the seawater already contains sodium ions and chloride ions, so it's going to take less salt in order to achieve that saturation point. Therefore, its molar solubility is less. And again, that's due to the presence of common ions already in that solution. It's time for everybody's favorite game, Will a precipitate form? That's right, and in order to figure out whether or not a precipitate will form, we have to compare the KSP to the QSP. Very similar to what we did with the equilibrium constant and the reaction quotient, here we have the solubility product constant and the solubility product quotient, or the KSP in comparison to the QSP, in order to figure out whether or not a precipitate will form. Now the key here is, and no pun intended, the key here is that we need to determine what the possible precipitate is going to be. So in order to do that, we need to come up with a net ionic equation in order to figure out what solid could possibly be uh, formed. Because we're not going to worry about anything that's aqueous here. We need to figure out what the solid is going to be, what our precipitate's going to be. And so we have to use our old friend here. We have to use our old friend here, the uh, solubility chart, in order to figure out which one of our substances is going to be and we're going to form the solid precipitate. And then what we do is we are going to take the KSP, and the KSP traditionally will be given to us, and compare it to the QSP. So we're going to have to establish what the concentrations of the ions are at this particular time or at the particular moment in time that you have the data for. And then what you do is compare your QSP that you've calculated for the current time or the current set of data that you have, and you compare it to the KSP. If we find that we have a QSP that is less than the KSP, we are unsaturated. That is, there is no precipitate formed. So if we're dealing with a scenario where the KSP is greater than the QSP or the QSP is less than the KSP, we have a value where the QSP has to increase, so the concentrations of the ions have to go up, which means in order for the concentration of those ions to go up and for the QSP value to go up, there has to be more of that solid dissolved. So we say that at this point there's no precipitate formed and we can, can add more of the solute or more of the solid to the solution. At the point where the QSP is equal to the KSP, the concentration of the ions is such that we have reached a point of complete saturation. Now this is sort of a theoretical scenario in which we have at the instant that the solid is being formed, it's also dissociating back into ions. So at the instant that we have this solid being formed because we've reached this point of saturation, that solid instantly turns back into those ions. There is still no precipitate at the point of complete saturation. So when we've achieved equilibrium in terms of solubility, again, there is no precipitate. And then finally, when we achieve a scenario where the QSP is greater than the KSP, what we have is a solution that's beyond the point of saturation, so we are going to have a precipitate formed until such time that enough ions have precipitated out of solution as a solid that we have an equilibrium scenario. So if our QSP is greater than our KSP, again we have a scenario where the ions have to precipitate out and form a solid until such time that those ion concentrations are equal to the equilibrium concentration and then at that point no more precipitation is going to be formed. So if you ever play a game of will a precipitate form, now you know how to win. And now you know why the White Cliffs of Dover aren't going to recede anytime soon. Thanks for watching.